What are the upcoming changes to Microsoft's PL200 exam and how they affect you if you are taking this exam? Hello, I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. Microsoft's PL200 exam is the third in the Microsoft Power Platform range. The first being PL900, which is all about fundamentals, and the PL100, which is about AppMaker. In the PL200, then you are creating application enhancements, customer user experiences, system integrations, data conversions, custom process automation, and custom visualizations. For me, the PL200 is a superset to the PL100. You are required to know everything about the PL100 and then some more. Let's have a look at the skills measured. So you can see that it is changing on September the 30th, 2022. And we've got these six major skills. Configure Microsoft Dataverse 20 to 25% and create apps by using Microsoft Power Apps 15 to 20% are unchanged for this new update. Create and manage Microsoft Power Automate 15 to 20% is being changed to create and manage process automation 20 to 25%. Now this increase is a bit odd because one of the major sections that they're removing is here, the build desktop floors. So this is all about using Power Automate for desktop. This is being removed. It is being replaced by create classic workflows, but creating classic workflows was part of the PL200 in the current update. It's just that there is more emphasis now, more number of marks, 20 to 25% available. There has been a major downgrade, not in terms of marks, but in terms of the name of this section, implement Microsoft Power Virtual Agents chatbots, goes down to just describe. Microsoft Power Virtual Agents. Again, it's still 10 to 15%, but you'll no longer be required to know the steps to implement them. This is very odd to me. And then the next one, integrate Microsoft Power Apps with other apps and services, gets changed to implement and visualize data by using data flows and Power BI. So what's being removed is implementing AI Builder and configuring and using templates. What's being added is creating and using data flows. Manage solutions is being removed in its entirety. Yes, there will still be a bullet point of create and manage solutions, but it's now going to be called define an environment strategy with participate in application lifecycle management or ALM and describe interoperability with other services, which basically just means Microsoft Teams and Power Automate Gateway. So let's go up into the PL200 study guide for this exam. So this is the study guide up to the 29th of September 2022. And I'll be talking about the changes from September 30th. So configure Microsoft Dataverse is largely unchanged. Now create and manage logic, the business rules, is all being concertinaed into one bullet point, create and configure business rules, and is being moved into the create model driven app section. Configure a synchronous classic workflow is being moved into create and manage process automation. The only other changes to this entire section are that configure privacy preferences is being removed and being added is manage sharing and diagnose security issues. The next section is all about creating apps by using Microsoft Power Apps. And there are quite a few changes to this. So gone for some reason is create and configure charts, not that that was a huge area anyway, and dashboards. This has been added to the PL100 exam. So maybe this is going to be more of a focus for the PL100 exam, the creating the model driven apps and the constituent parts. Also going is the select applicable assets and apply organizational branding. Added are use specialized form components, determine which reporting options to use, including embedding Power BI or using RDL, report definition language, configuring custom pages and configuring modern commanding. In other words, the toolbar that you've got above the model driven app. And that to me is slightly odd because that is one of the focuses of the PL400 exam, which is all about programming. 
the Create Canvas apps is really being reduced. It's now just define use cases for Canvas apps. So it's now identify when to create a Canvas app, describe Canvas app structure, describe form navigation, formulas, variables and collections and error handling. But you notice previously it said implement, it's now just describe and run Power Automate flaws based on actions which occur in a Canvas app. So again, I think the emphasis is on doing this as part of the PL100 exam and now you just need to know about it. And then finally, create portal apps. Well, this is being renamed to the Microsoft Power Pages. So that's the new name for the portal apps. And while two of the bullet points are basically there unchanged, the additional ones are now configure advanced power pages features. Well, I suspect that is the portal details, the actions and the authentication. Describe use cases for templates and implement registration options. Again, that would be part of the portal authentication. If we go into the next section, create and manage Microsoft Power Automate, then there's lots of different words which are being used, but really these first two sections are basically there unchanged. So some of it is a bit more, okay, I'm not entirely sure what you mean. So we've got configure parallel branches in the current version. In the new version, it would be configure advanced logic, which I think is the same. But if you discount the fact that lots of different words are being used, the gist of what is there is going to be the same. Build desktop flaws is completely going. So this is now really the subject of the PL500 exam, Microsoft Power Automate RPA developer. So it's no longer being required as part of the PL200 exam. What is coming in its place is create classic workflows, which as I said, is here previously. So it's being moved to a different section. Now there's also been a downgrading to the next section, implement Microsoft Power Virtual Agents chatbots. This is now describe Microsoft Power Virtual Agents. You've got the major headings, identify use cases for Power Virtual Agents and identify the components for Power Virtual Agents. So use cases is identify chatbot environments. So where can you put it maybe? So Microsoft Teams and other channels. Describe chatbot skills and AI capabilities and identify options for security. In the identify components of Power Virtual Agents, there's topics, entities, and identify use cases for fallback topics. However, for me, there are a lot more components of Power Virtual Agents. For example, we've got questions, messages, conditions, escalations, error messages. We've also got the removal of call a power automate flow to run an action as well. So it has really gone down from an implement to a describe. However, I think a lot of the things that you need to know, you still need to know, even though they are no longer being explicitly being shown. Next section, well, integrate Microsoft Power apps with other apps and services is being renamed import and visualize data by using data flaws and Power BI. So the consume Power BI and Power Platform is add Power BI tiles to model driven and Canvas apps, add Canvas apps to a Power BI dashboard, trigger Power Automate flaws from Power BI apps and use Power BI in Power Pages. So that's the new name for portal apps. But again, what's being removed? Create. Power BI visualization reports and dashboards. So in other words, these are existing tiles. These are existing dashboards that you'll be implementing them with. Speaking of implementing, AI Builder also goes. So there is some AI Builder in the PL100 exam. In the PL200, this seemed to be at a much higher level, but this is now gone. And configure and use templates is also gone. So the final section, manage solutions, again, all of this is really gone. We've got the export and import solutions. Well, that's sort of still there in the new section, which is called define an environment strategy. So first of all, we've got participate in application lifecycle management. So we start off with describe the use cases for app checker and solution checker, create and manage solutions, and describe the difference between manage and unmanaged solutions. And then in a new section, describe interoperability with other services. We've got 
add apps to Microsoft Teams, create Teams channels, and identify when to use Power Automate Gateway. So really knowing more about solutions has really gone on the back burner for the PL200. It's now just create and manage solutions and know the difference between managed and unmanaged. So there are a lot of changes here. Really, it is a downplaying of virtual agents. It's a downplaying of power apps. Now you just have to describe them. You have to consume the Power BI and there is no more any implementing AI builder, which is now part of the PL200 and the build desktop flaws. Well, this is being imported in a summary level in the PL100 exam and other areas like the virtual agent is going from an implement to a describe. Well, I hope you found this useful. If you want more assistance with the PL200 requirements, then please join me in my Udemy course. Now my PL200 course is the follow up to my PL100 course because I believe that the PL200 builds on the PL100. So if you know how to create apps, then that's a huge proportion of the PL200 done. And we can then have a look at all of the rest. So the PL100 is around 16 hours. The PL200 is around nine and a half hours. So in the PL200, we will be looking at Canvas, Model Driven Apps, Power BI, and looking at chatbots, Power Pages, Microsoft Dataverse, and more. In the PL100 course, we'll be looking at how to actually create our Canvas apps, our Model Driven apps, and our Power Automate flows, and more. And if all of this seems to you a lot more detailed than you want to get into right now, then please have a look at the PL900 course. So in around seven and a half hours, we'll have a higher level look at the Power BI, Dataverse, Power Apps, Canvas and Model Driven Apps, Power Automate, Power Virtual Agents as more. There are quizzes as we go through these courses and a practice exam so you can be sure that you are learning. There are links to all of my Power Platform courses in the description to this video, or why not go to my website, idodata.com. Well, thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked it, then please click the like, and why not click on subscribe and click that bell? That way you'll be notified of any new videos. Thank you very much for watching this, and keep learning.